Hello, hello! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tony, and I am playing um, Super Mario World and talking about um, what it was like to be married to my ex-husband, um, who I don't know for sure. Again, I'm going to reiterate that I am not a psychiatrist, and I cannot diagnose anyone, but I suspect that my ex-husband um, may have been, or may be, currently is still around, may be um, a narcissist. Um, oh, shit. Anyway. Um, so last time I talked about when we first met and just like some of like the small little things. So if you missed that, watch that video. Um, but it was just like little things that like, I prop like reflecting back, I realized it should have been kind of like, I don't know, red flags or whatever, but apparently I really liked the color red or something. I don't know. But anyway, after, like, when when my husband and I, ex-husband and I first got together, um, you know, he did the whole thing where he was, uh, you know, he liked what I liked, and, you know, we liked the same books and the same authors and the same TV shows, and he didn't drink, and he blah, 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 blah. Basically, everything that I wanted, he was, you know? Um, and then, uh, he, um... Like, after I got pregnant with our, uh, with our first child, he slowly but surely kind of morphed into, like, kind of control. Like, this is gonna sound messed up, especially given what happened, um, but he, um, I really think, like, I'm trying to think of a way to word this without it being messed up. I kind of feel like he was testing the waters with me sometimes, and if he thought that he could have gotten away with it, maybe he would have tried to be a little bit, um, abusive, almost. Like, I, oh. <laughs> I feel like he, he was kind of testing the waters because there were times where he did certain things. Like he would get right in my face, which a lot of people are going to, like I guess if people actually watch this, a lot of people are going to comment and inform me that all these things that I'm going to be talking about actually was domestic abuse and I just didn't realize it. Um, but at the time I didn't know. But like he would get like right up in my face and scream at me even when I was pregnant. And he would um, like th like throw things, not like at me. Like he didn't throw things at me, but he would throw things, you know, just like as like a, I guess, intimidation tactic or whatever. I remember one time I was on the phone with my sister and he did not like when I was on the phone. He could not stand it if I was talking on the phone. I don't know why. He just, he did not want me on the phone, especially with my sisters. I think because he couldn't, like, say mean things to me, or maybe just because he wasn't getting um, attention. Um, but he took our cordless phone that we had, and he broke it in half. Just grabbed it, snapped it right in half. And I was like, are you kidding me? Well, we had two... Um, we had two phones, so I called my sister on the other phone, and I was like, you will not believe what this psychopath did, and like told her all about how he grabbed the cell phone, or not cell phone, cordless phone and snapped it in half. Ironically, when he got arrested for domestic violence, um, just last October, one of, like, the felony, the, the felony was dropped, but the felony was because he interfered with electronic communications and he took my, my youngest son's cell phone out of his hand when he was trying to call 911. And that was actually like his, his biggest charge. And so, you know, back then, back when, you know, we didn't really have cell phones and we just had a home phone, he literally took, took my phone right out of my hand as I was trying to talk on it. And I'm not kidding you, snapped it in half. 
If I had known then what I know now, I could have had him arrested, as messed up as that is. Um, I don't think I would have because I was still too young and like, you know, naive or whatever, but I could have. Um, so that was, you know, th those were like the, the little things that he would do. Um, and I really, I feel like he was testing the waters. And I feel like if I would have cowered and not like said anything to my sisters or anything like that or told my friends, um, I feel like maybe he may have pushed them a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to speculate too much because, you know, I don't want to get into slander territory or anything. But I really do feel like if I had kept quiet and meek instead of loudly telling everyone that will listen when he was acting like a crazy person, I really do feel like maybe my life would have been quite a bit more violent a lot sooner. Um, but, you know, for, for a while there, things were pretty good for us, if that makes sense. Like, compared to, like, other relationships I've had, no, things were not, were not good. Um, just because he was still, like, he still was not a very, you know, he... We would get along and stuff, but, like, he was never super, like, caring. Like, sometimes he would get me something for, like, Valentine's Day or my birthday, but mostly just if it was something that he could, like, um, like, show off to other people. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was more of, like, a, I'm doing this so that I can show other people what I did because I'm so amazing kind of thing. Um, but... Um, but, and I mean, I guess in, in the beginning, maybe he would sometimes, like, one Valentine's Day, he got me, like, this box made of chocolate and, like, all this chocolate stuff from this one store, um, like a chocolate shop. Um, but honestly, most of the time, if he got me a gift, it was because he felt guilty about something. It wasn't actually, like, like... He, he never really got me Christmas presents. Um, the only reason that there was actually Christmas presents for me under the Christmas tree most years is because as my kids got older, they would get upset if I didn't have Christmas presents because they didn't understand why Santa, um, why Santa was ignoring mom. So I, um, you know, I tried to explain to them that, that Santa Santa doesn't buy presents for moms and dads. Santa buys presents for kids. But to them, that wasn't acceptable. Um, they wanted Santa to, to bring me presents. So instead of, you know, just letting my kids be upset on Christmas morning when mom didn't have a present, I would just buy myself a present and say that it was from, um, from my ex-husband. And of course, I would buy him presents. And he always, like, okay, for instance, Father's Day. Um, I'll bring that up since today is Father's Day. Um, now, of course, I don't care about presents, so it was never a big deal to me if I didn't have presents on my birthday, if I didn't have presents on um, Mother's Day, because, you know, my kids would always make something at school. I didn't care if he didn't get me something for Christmas. Like, this is not, like, a situation where, like, oh, I thought he was a horrible husband because he didn't buy me enough gifts. No, I don't, I don't care about gifts. I did not care if he didn't get me anything. But he... He was the type where he would get upset on like things like Mother's Day or like my birthday or Christmas because the attention wasn't focused on him. Um, so he would be, he would, he would, he would be cranky those days and he would basically borderline ruin almost every like holiday or event because he wasn't getting the full attention. So that's why my birthday and things like that were not oh, I just fell right off of there, were not usually celebrated very well. Like I mean, they were because my sisters and I and like my mom, like I would just say I'm going to my mom's. If he came, he came. If he didn't, he didn't. So he wouldn't really have a choice. But like at home, he wasn't like gonna wake me up on Mother's Day to like breakfast in bed. He wasn't going to, you know, make sure that on my birthday I had, you know, my favorite dinner or you know what I mean? Nothing like that. Like he wasn't isn't, I'm sure still. 
like thoughtful in that way and I am um so it didn't really bother me because I do understand that not everybody has you know the same love language or whatever so just because he, you know he doesn't do that kind of stuff doesn't mean that you know that I'm gonna stop doing it because I enjoy doing that kind of thing for people so it wasn't really like a point of contention between us like I know it sounds like it should have been but it, it honestly wasn't because I don't I don't care enough about that kind of thing if that makes sense like it didn't it didn't really bother me um sometimes it would bother my kids like they would point it out but I would just tell them you know it's not a big deal I don't care um but like for instance when I was growing up Every Mother's Day, my dad would wake my four sisters and I up, and we would make homemade donuts for our mother, and we would, you know, go, quote unquote, wake her up, even though she was already in bed, you know, pretending to still be asleep, because I don't think she could sleep through the nonsense that we probably were creating in her house, and, and probably the mess. Um, but anyway, we... Um, uh, my dad would, would make homemade donuts for Mother's Day. Well, because of the fact that I did not marry a man who's going to wake my children up on Mother's Day and have them make homemade donuts, um, I decided that instead of, you know, continuing that tradition with my own kids for myself, instead what I would do is I would make the donuts for my ex-husband on Father's Day because then I'm doing it with my kids like my father did but it's also like a, a tribute to my own father because I'm, I'm doing what he used to do and it I liked it because it's nice to, to make someone something like that and it's also nice to um to remember my dad in that way because that was something that we did together um so that that was why I did that and we actually did that again this year we made donuts for um for my ex-husband and for um my oldest son's dad as well um and I sent the donuts with the kids for visitation and one of my kids said something and was like so wait a minute you made these for your dad he made his own donuts on father's day and I said no my dad made these with us for mother's day and, but, you know, you're, that was not something that was done for me for Mother's Day, so I decided to take the tradition myself with you guys and just do it for your father instead. And I was like, you know, that is why we are still doing this, even though your father and I are divorced, because I want to continue the tradition because of my father. So, um, but, you know, like, it, it was little things like that where, you know, I, I would go above and beyond for birthdays, holidays, things like that, and it was not done for me, and I did not really, I did not really care, like I didn't, it wasn't until it was pointed out to me that it was kind of crazy that like even on my birthday, I remember my ex-husband, I, I went and picked up dinner for all of us from, you know, wherever it was that I wanted to have dinner. And of course we had to have carry out. Um, I think it was because it was during COVID at the, for this particular time. But um, right after we ate, my ex-husband left to go hang out with his friend. And I remember one of my friends being like, I, I can't believe he just left. Like, it's your birthday and he's not hanging out with you. And to me, it was so normal that I didn't even, I was just like, well, yeah, you know, he wants to go hang out with his friend. And like, even my kids, a lot of the time, probably I'd say 80% of the time at least, my ex-husband was not here on my middle child's birthday because it was right around Labor Day and he would be up north at his dad's. And so he would be gone and he, he wouldn't he wouldn't be here and that was just so normalized that my kid didn't even get upset about it because dad was never here he didn't usually come to like the birthday parties that we would have like I had a bowling alley birthday party for my kid Hell, I took Lucas for his seventh birthday I took him to Disney World my ex-husband did not come it was just me and my kids 
and he didn't even want to come. Like, things like that. Like, he just... Things that were not for him, like now Father's Day and his birthday, better be a big deal. We had better make a big deal about it. And on Christmas, he better have presents. But things like... Things that were not solely focused on him just were not a priority for him. Even now. Like... Obviously, um, because of everything that happened, he missed, uh, well, I don't think he was around for my middle kid's birthday. I don't, we weren't split up yet, but I think that he was just off doing his own thing. Um, so he wasn't around for that. Um, but for our youngest child's birthday, he wasn't, he was out of the house and didn't really... I mean, to be fair, at that time, he was, I mean, I do have a PPO, so he wasn't allowed around us at all. Um, and the supervised visitation hadn't started, but, like, he didn't get birthday presents, he didn't get Christmas presents, like, it was always me. So, even, like, being split up, he's still not really doing that stuff, you know? So, I don't know. It just, it's, it's very interesting how, like, until people pointed it out, I didn't really realize how strange it is that, like, like, even my 40th birthday, that to me it was a huge deal, simply because my dad was 38 when he died. So to me, turning 40 years old was a major deal. And my birthday was not even really And, it, you know, I tried to not be hurt about that, but, it, I mean, that's, that's kind of hard, especially when, like, not, I, I'm not saying that you have to, like, get me a bunch of presents or anything, obviously you don't have to do that, but you could at least tell me happy birthday. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, whatever. I'm just saying that. It's something that, that I didn't really notice until it was pointed out by someone. Um, I don't even remember where I was going with that when I went off on that tangent, but like, I I know I talked about how he, I really do feel like he would have been a lot more violent a lot sooner had I not, um, had I not made it clear that I would tell everyone that will listen. Um, but anyway, I'm going to end this here, and then I'll talk some more about this. I could probably talk about this for days. So, I'll be back tomorrow. If you liked this, let me know. Give it a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Follow my socials. Um, let me know if you saw this on TikTok. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put clips of every video on TikTok, but just I try sometimes. So, thanks for watching. Bye.